it's Dr. Ken with you again. This is our last electromagnetism lesson 11 exercise tutorial. So how does the video operate? Step one, we ask a exercise question. You then pause the video and have a go at it. Then continue to play the video and I'll provide you a hint an idea on how to complete the exercise then continue to play the video and then I will give you a worked explanation step four continue to play the video and of course you'll get the next question so let's get underway question one list three electrical methods used to break a DC motor that's break as in slow down I pause here Here's your hint. Think about each of the individual electrical parts of a motor and how braking may be achieved, e.g. maybe reversing the supply. So we can use plugging, reversing the supply. We can use dynamic and dynamic can be interposing some resistors and it can be regenerative where we're putting energy back into the supply. Question two, list three general methods used to control the speed of a DC motors and describe how they work. So pause here. There are only a few limited ways we can control the speed of a DC motor and they all involve some kind of voltage control which then controls the current. So pause again. So you can use field control, control the voltage and so the current in the field. This in turn controls the flux between the poles and then of course the speed. Resistive or what's sometimes called rheostatic control. This uses a resistor to drop voltage at, to the armature and or to the field and this reduces the flux all around so also the speed reduces. Or what's called straight voltage control. You use some external method to control the actual applied voltage. This in turn reduces the flux and also reduces the speed. So the three are field control, resistive and voltage control. Question three. In a DC shunt connected motor, the speed of the armature is decreased if A. The shunt field strength is decreased. B. The voltage applied to the shunt field is decreased. C. The current flowing in the field circuit is decreased. Or D. The resistance of the shunt field is decreased. So pause here while you think about it. So what is the relationship between field strength and speed? Is it proportional or is it inversely proportional? So in a DC shunt connected motor, the speed of the armature is decreased if the resistance of the shunt field circuit is decreased. So if you decrease the resistance for the shunt field, you will decrease the speed. In a DC compound connected motor using an armature resistance control for the speed of the armature will decrease the shunt field circuit resistance is increased, the armature circuit resistance is decreased, C the armature circuit resistance is increased 
all the armature circuit resistance is shorted. So in a DC compound connected motor, using armature resistance controls the speed of an armature will decrease if. Again, what is the relationship between armature strength and speed? Proportional, inversely proportional. So the answer in this case, the armature circuit resistance is increased. If you increase the armature resistance, you decrease the current through it and the motor speed will decrease. Five, to increase the speed of a shunt DC motor by using field control, the resistance of the field circuit sorry, is A, decreased, B, increased, C, shorted, D, unchanged. To increase the speed of a shunt DC motor by using field control, the resistance of the field circuit is A, B, C or D. Pause here. Here's your hint. What is the relationship between field strength and speed? Again, we're thinking about proportional and inversely proportional. So the answer is to increase the speed of a shunt DC motor by using field control, the resistance of the field circuit is increased which decreases the current which reduces the magnetic field which will increase the speed so it's inversely proportional five uh, six sorry the performance of difference between a permanent magnet and a wire wound field DC motor is so what's the performance difference between those two types a the linear characteristic of speed and torque the linear characteristics of voltage and current, the linear characteristics of speed and voltage, or D, the linear characteristics of current and voltage. So what's going to affect its performance between the two types? Here's the hint. What is the relationship between field strength and motor output? That's what you've got to think about. What is the relationship between field strength and motor output. So it's the linear characteristic of speed and torque. So that's the important one. The performance difference between a permanent magnet and a wire wound DC motor is its linear characteristics between speed and torque. Seven, a permanent magnet DC motor output performance can be affected by what? A, time, B, limited field strength, C, voltage variations, D, current variations. Pause here. Here's your hint. What things will limit the power out of a motor? So what things here will limit our power out? So permanent magnet DC motor output performance can be affected by time, no limited field strength because you've only got a permanent magnet, it's only got so much amount of flux or Teslas in it, so it's a You've only got a limited amount of field strength. Voltage variations will affect it a little bit. Current variations will affect it a little bit, but the biggest one by far will be the limited field strength provided by the permanent magnets. Question eight, brushless DC motors use electronic what? Electronic commutation, electronic current control, electronic pulsing, electronic voltage. Here's your hint. What creates the effect for a brushless 
and a commutator. What, what creates the effect of brushes and a commutator that we don't have in a brushless DC motor? The answer is commutation. We do that electronically. We switch the coils. That's what a commutator normally does. The brushes and the segments of the commutator provide switching. But in a brushless DC motor, we provide that commutation effect, that switching effect, electronically by switching different parts of coils around the motor, therefore forcing another, normally a magnetic ring of some kind, to chase our switched magnetic field. Nine, stepper motors are used where the load requires what? A pulsating action, A. Fixed incremental adjustments, B. C, the ability to be able to be jogged. Or high speeds, D. So how is a stepper motor constructed? Think about how we went through the construction of a stepper motor and what fits here out of A, B, C or D. So the answer is fixed incremental adjustment. A can't be right. It does kind of produce a pulsating action, but you can't see it. It's very fine. Jogging's got nothing to do with it. We're not really speed controlling, even though we can. But the big thing is fixed incremental adjustments, which is the big plus. You get exactly the same amount of step out of a stepper motor every single time. That's its big advantage. In a stepper motor, the pulses are applied to what? The commutator, the armature, the rotor or the field, A, B, C or D. The hint is, how is a stepper motor constructed? Think about how a stepper motor is constructed and what are we switching to get it to rotate? So we're switching the field. It creates a commutator action, but there is no actual commutator. The armature is a spinning magnet and there is no rotor as such. So we are simply switching pulses to the field. So that brings us to the end of electromagnetism. Lesson 11 exercise tutorial. I hope you've gained some insight further into DC motors and their various types.